what's going on you guys welcome back to channel anders and today's video is just kind of a miscellaneous going over a bunch of different stuff but uh hopefully you guys stay tuned and uh see what i have going on so a bunch of random stuff as i said started off just going through here and organizing the mess of parts if you guys look back at older videos you'll see what i'm talking about it used to be just a big bin full of a bunch of random stuff Try to go through what old parts were stuck down here. I'm gonna throw the M155 engine cover back on just so it's not sitting down here. Um, I have the stock C55 sway bars if anyone needs them. The front one would be upgrade definitely if you have a regular W203 or W209. The rear one is pretty much the same on all the sport models. If you don't have a sport model, be worthwhile. I'll sell it for like 90 bucks for the pair if you guys want them, but um, there's the two old shifters, the spares. And then here's all the stuff that getting rid of. Lots of just old bracketry. This shouldn't be in there. Um, but here's old shocks. Try to put them up for sale. They are still, I mean, still have some life left in them. And they're hard to find, but I mean, who's going to buy old shocks? So understandable. Here's a secondary air pump. I don't think anybody's going to buy that. And just a bunch of like old plastics. Here's the old... Um, Clutch master cylinder that's worn out that I took out when I got the pedal assembly. Um, but yeah, all that's going to the scrap. And right now what I'm doing is I'm going to take off the uh, MAF and the throttle um, intake elbow that's underneath this. And I want to measure the exact size of the throttle body opening because I think I have a plan that's maybe possible. Don't know yet. Um, but I was thinking about running a silicone elbow instead of the plastic um, housing. And I'll show you guys why once I get it out, but um, that's where we're at right now. I checked uh, oil level as well, since we've changed oil. It's already gone down about a quart, uh, a little less than a quart. So I'm gonna try this stuff out. I've had it sitting around and you know, it's not gonna hurt anything. Trust Luca Molly products, so give it a try and see if I have any less oil consumption in the next thousand miles or so. All right, so this is out. And first off, everything's way easier to work on without the EGR in the way. Um, and I love having these silicone hoses because you don't have to worry about the brittle rubber ones um, that are factory on there. But my thought for this, um, I know that these flaps are kind of for guiding the airflow and maybe smoothing it out a bit. But the overall shape in here is, it's kind of oblong and it's got kind of weird cavities and um, this side being flat, I don't really know why it's like that. Nothing attaches onto there except for um, that port right there, which connects to that hose pulling out of the um, crankcase breather. But I was just thinking if it's possible to mount a silicone elbow onto here, because I think there is enough room on the actual throttle body. Like there's enough grab on here that I could slip one out of there and throw a um, clamp onto it, that it would stay put. And the thing that holds the map up is actually this. Uh, this attaches to the top of the intake manifold and that kind of holds it put up there so that was a possibility um, and then the two options i would have would be to add a port like this one has on the silicone elbow or uh, to use a trick that i learned from my stepdad about um, evacuating the crankcase via the exhaust um, using like a little valve that you basically weld into the exhaust and then you route um, a hose to it. And that kind of has the same effect of pulling vacuum out of the crankcase. Um, I was just asking him, I don't know what the difference is of like, if it's a greater pulling force via the exhaust or via pulling to the throttle body, how, how it was here. So I don't know the answer to that, but um, just figured it would eliminate um, a little bit of the oil that travels into the throttle plate. These two um, that are coming off, I mean, they literally have like 
a pinhole size that they actually pull out of. So I don't think those would be contaminating the uh, intake manifold as much. And I was even thinking of maybe adding like a, a fuel filter in the middle of one of those, just kind of an inline filter to eliminate you know any possibility of uh, oil getting into the intake. But those go basically on top of the throttle body after the plate. And the bigger one right here actually goes before the throttle plate. So that dirties up the throttle plate, which can affect performance. And it also gets fed directly into the manifold. So um, I did read that using just a, a vent to atmosphere like filter, the little filters that you guys probably have seen. I read that that isn't very good for your motor because it, um, it will let pressure escape, yes, but it doesn't pull vacuum, which is kind of the point of how the system works, is to pull vacuum and it gets rid of um, like condensation, excess gases, um, and the oil vapor. So you have better ring seal and a few other benefits of having you know a PCV system. So a couple options, but I don't know. I just, I just wanted to measure this and see what kind of elbows were out there that maybe I could purchase and experiment with. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna measure the opening of this without um, the, or actually not this side. I'm gonna measure the throttle body itself. Get a few measurements off of that, get an accurate kind of estimate. And then I'll also measure um, both sides of the math, which they should be the same, but just to be sure, measure the math and um, see what I can find. It, it should be, I know the top is close to like three and five sixteenth inches, about 3.2 or something like that from last time I measured. So I'm gonna grab a caliper and go ahead and measure everything up and I'll show you guys what I find. All right, so that is the math opening. A little over 3.2. I, I remembered it was somewhere between 3.2 and 3.5, so kind of right in the middle. It's just on the edge of 3.4, but if I was to grab, you know, like a 3.25 um, silicone hose, that would work uh, perfectly fine. Um, I can convert this to millimeters real quick. So it's about 86 millimeters, and this is the opening side. So now I need to check um, the bottom of the math and the throttle body, just to be sure. All right, so the bottom of the math was actually a tiny bit smaller, kind of minuscule, so not really matters in the much, or matters much in the scheme of things. 3.33 um, basically, and the top was about 3.39. So subtle difference. Didn't realize it would be that way. Thought it would be the same, but that's why we measure. Now I'm going to go ahead and measure the throttle body. All right, so I just measured the throttle body um, outer diameter, and it is 3.15. And it has just about a perfect amount of width right here for just a regular like worm clamp um, to fit on there. So I can measure this. This is probably, I don't know, a quarter inch or half an inch wide so um i'll measure this to be sure but that's almost exactly as much room uh, that's on there as far as the lip to actually run a clamp on so in theory if i can find a uh like 3.2 3.25 silicone elbow um or better yet, like a three inch to a 3.25 inch elbow, then could technically make something for this. And if I wanted to make it really simple, then I could put a port onto the silicone elbow, or if I wanted to run the evac system through the exhaust, then I could run that from this right side, which I'd have to snake through um, on the side of the transmission or somewhere and uh, post O2 sensor. Um, so I don't know, I haven't made my mind up on that, but I do think it would clean up, um, the airflow to have that silicone coupler on there. So the next thing I want to try, because the intake box has to push onto 
the MAF. I want to try to mount the MAF um, with just that clamp on there and see if it will stay put with just that holding it onto the intake, intake manifold because there's not going to really be that um, force on the bottom side anymore holding it up like this plastic elbow does. So that's another thing to consider because um, obviously silicone is not going to provide much resistance at all. So that's one more thing to consider when trying this out and uh, testing and experimenting with this. So let me see. All right, and here is where the plan falls flat for now. Uh, I thought this provided more resistance when this clip is engaged over here, but looks like it doesn't do much actually. So if you can imagine silicone hose under this and try to provide resistance when you try to push the box, intake box down onto that, um, that becomes troublesome. So if I was running a you know different intake where it had a silicone hose on that side as well, and do like a single setup over here, then this would be possible. But if you're planning on running the factory air box, it's just not gonna work because it doesn't have anything providing resistance like this is doing when it's sitting underneath. Um, so if you try to smash the air box on, it's just gonna probably break this clip or something, or it's gonna be a nightmare to try to get it to sit flush so yeah not sure about this so i mean technically there is space to run you know a filter over here it, it's kind of cluttered with the uh water pump lines but um it's possible if i wanted to just run a singular intake over here but not so sure the other models that, you know, some other models with M113, they have this coolant reservoir on the opposite side or different location or a little more room over here, like the W210 E55, for example, has a lot more room over here. So you can run like a big filter and just three inch piping um, up to the intake. But with this one, it's kind of cluttered. I mean, I could get rid of this horn and technically I'd have quite a bit of space to run filter over in this area um, and then I basically snake snake piping down here and into a filter but I'm not sure uh, the factory airbox performs very well and of course it looks cool and came with the car but um, I don't know uh, while I was in here went ahead and cleaned the throttle plate a little bit Hasn't been that long since I uh, took it off and put a new gasket on it. I mean, over a year, but um, it's fairly clean on this side. From what I remember though, last time I took it off, most of the gunk ends up getting stuck on the back side of the plate. So I actually got um, intake manifold gaskets and new fuel injector seals and all that stuff. I'm planning on doing that probably in a few weeks after we do the dyno session. I don't want to mess with it before then. So everything's running fine, so I'm not gonna risk it before um, that date because that's pretty important. But after all that, um, especially summer coming around, I'll have a little more time and can pull the intake out and clean it all up since we don't have all the EGR gases going into it anymore. And maybe we'll be able to come up with some type of solution for that uh, intake elbow one. I can put maybe an inline filter on it or I don't know, come up with something so that it's not feeding onto the throttle body. These tiny ones, I don't have much of a problem with because I mean, they're barely taking any vapor um, from these because they're literally like a pinhole size on these crankcases um, and it's going after the throttle plate. But the one in front of it is the one that gunks up the actual plate. So anyways, if you guys know about this system more than I do, the whole uh, crankcase system and all that stuff and know any better, feel free to comment or if you guys have any uh, suggested solutions, um, feel free to let me know. Also with intakes, if you guys have any recommendations, happy to hear, um, happy with the OEM box. I'm not really looking for any more power, just more so 
clean of air as possible. Um, so we'll see. All right, everything's put back together. Had to experiment to find out, but it's kind of a fail, but oh well, I've got the measurements for everything in case I want to try it in the future. I'm adding in uh, one bottle of the Liquamali motor oil saver. Stuff has really good reviews. It was really thick. <laughs> it was like a magic oil. It has kind of their uh, like fluorescent hue to it too, but it says it treats up to five liters of oil, so I could technically put both in here right now or close to both. So I'll just start out with one can and see how it goes. Maybe I'll add the other half, I don't know, but letting it drain out right now. All right, put the other bottle in too. Might as well have two of them. Treats up to 10 quarts, so five wasn't really gonna be enough for the nine quarts that are in here right now. So we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, it has really good reviews online and I've heard from other C55 owners that have tried it and have had success. So it's not going to hurt anything. Um, worth trying out. It's not that big a deal. These cars are designed to burn some oil, but we'll see what happens. All right, you guys. Well, I'm headed out. Car seems to be running fine with the uh, that thick magical liquid from uh, Liquid Molly in the engine. Um, so I'll report back uh, in the next. I don't know. It's going to take a while to drive that many miles to give you guys an accurate reading, but. Whenever I have it, I'll report it in a video. Um, yeah, I've, I've been trying to take it easy with the car because um, I have the dyno date coming up on the 14th, I believe. So just kind of leaving it be and just taking it out for a drive every once in a while. Don't want to do anything major because I don't want to have the chance of you know breaking something or, or messing something up before um, that date. So hopefully you guys can stay patient and uh, I hope you guys are excited to see that. I'm super excited to see what the car puts down as of now, like stock, because I'm going to do a stock run and then be able to report back to uh, Anthony from uh, Race IQ. And then he'll send over the tune based off of what I give him, air fuel and the power that it's making, etc. And then we'll run it again with the tune on it, see what it puts down, make adjustments, etc. So I'm excited to see what it puts down stock and excited to see what it puts down tuned. Um, so yeah, I guess that'll do for now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, kind of a miscellaneous day, but I'm uh, just showing you guys kind of like a behind the scenes of what I'm doing when I'm just messing with the car. So if you have any questions or comments or info or knowledge to share, please enter down in the comments. I'm always happy to chat with you guys. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.